So this week, in the next, and after here, uh, I'm going to give you eight keys. Eight keys. How do you count all joy in the midst of the battle? Because when things are getting rough, when you're in the middle of a fight, when things are happening bad, when you hear the bad news, you don't always realize, okay, count all joy. Amen? And so you've got to have some keys that you understand what to do, when to do, and how to do it, right? So we got our pen and paper out and our cameras. I love when people are, are they're taking pictures. I do it too of what's going on. So here we go. Number one, the first thing you do is always be aware that we're constantly in a spiritual war. Always be aware that we are constantly in a spiritual war. We're in a fight. Everyone say fight. Say it again, fight. fight. And so the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy, but Christ said in John 10, 10 that I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. And so as Christians, when you have the mindset that you're always in a fight, you'll never let your guard down. Many of us let our guard down. We, we, after a great victory in Christ and the Spirit, we, did we kind of relax? No, you can't relax. Uh, you have to keep the mindset that you're always in a war, and you always have your head on the demonic chopping block. He's always trying to get you, get you, get you, get you. And he'll always come at you when you least expect it or when you're most vulnerable. Perfect example. I'm going to share our testimony from, uh, from yesterday. Um, I normally drive, you know, when we go places. And so, so we had to go to somewhere yesterday. We had to go to my daughter's uh, game and also uh, my son went to a birthday party. And so we had to drive separate cars. And so I left first, I got the field perfectly fine, and then my wife calls me, and she's over off of 95, and some dude in the car is following her, slowing down when she slows down, speeds up when she speeds up, letting the window down, and my wife calls me, and she said, honey, he's going to follow me to the game. I said, let him follow you to the game. Please. <laughs> let him follow you to the park. Please let him follow you. No. So, <laughs> with, with my two girls in there. So, that's number one. And then, so, we were at church last night. My wife did worship. She went back home to, to take care of her stuff. And I'm, you know, I'm here just praising God and having a good time and everything. So, I get in the car, and she left the church. At 7.15, we leave the church here by 8.15 after a meeting. I said, hey, I'm coming home. She said, okay, great. And I said, you okay, well, I'm, I'm worn out. What happened? Well, the exit you take off of 2.15 to go to my house is Gibson. And so when you exit here, there's a stop, there's a stop light here. And there's a lane here and a lane here that goes that way. And so normally, I would say normally, normally, normally my wife would accelerate after, after you know, you put your, you put your, pet, your gas in the you pedal, the pedal, and she leave. Well, something said, everyone said something. something, something said, slow down. And she slowed down, and she heard some squealing in the background. This guy in a gray Camaro, Mustang, comes flying through, okay, flying through, barely missed you by what? A foot, foot and a half. I went there, but I, I heard a little bit. So he's going 60 miles an hour. He barely misses her. He hydroplanes right up in the air wow. and lands in the rocks there off of the off, uh, off of Gibson 215. Well, so then my wife says, <laughs> because she's getting out of the car. Jay was like, jealous, jealous, you know. So then. The, the you know uh, the police come and, and it just so happened the people who, who stopped who I almost hit were also medical professionals. So they get out of the car. The guy's car is about 40 feet in the rocks. He can't he can't get out because he doesn't have four wheel drive and a Mustang. So anyway, <laughs> um, he gets out of the car. He's talking and the dude is drunk. He's drunk. So we are always in a fight. And the enemy tried to infinite thing I too about most more women in the whole wide world, and you wonder why I tied. <laughs> because he rebukes the devourer for his name's sake. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So folks, we're always in a fight. Instead of here, I could be either at the hospital visiting them or in a morgue. Let's, let's just keep it real right now, okay? So as a Christian, we are always in a fight. Never, ever let your guard down, church. Don't do that. So here's some verses to tell me out here. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 8 says this. Be well-balanced, temperate, use self-control. Be sober, mind, be vigilant, and cautious at all times for that enemy of yours. 
<laughs> the devil roams around like a roaring lion in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. But it says, withstand him, be firm in faith against his onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable, and determined, knowing that the same identical sufferings are appointed to, the, to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christ throughout the world. Now watch this. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of grace, that's our God, who imparts all blessing, you want to say all blessing? All say all favor. all favor. Then watch this. Who has called you to his own eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will himself complete and make you what you ought to be. Wow. So trials make you what you ought to be, or what you need to be. Hallelujah. And it will ground you securely and strengthen and settle you. That's why we go, that's why we kind of all do it now. 2 Timothy 4, 7 says this. It says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. So in today's vernacular and in everyday vernacular, y'all, we're in a fight. We're in a fight. We're fighting. And y'all, you know what? We've already won. We just got to accept the fact that we won and walk through it. Because you know what? There's stuff that you're going to walk through as a Christian that God will not take you out of. I'll prove it to you in a second. There are things that you're going to have to go through as a Christian, bad stuff, hurtful stuff, painful stuff, that God wants to walk you through so that you can become more and more refined like him. Amen? Now watch this. Number two. Number two is you take the fight to the devil. You have to take the fight to the devil. We shall not be walking around. The Bible says in Genesis 4, it's talking to Cain. Everyone say Cain. It's talking to Cain when Cain made the choice to give God a bad offering. He was kind of being arrogant and kind of being um, uh, overly um, self, self, selfish. And God says, Cain, why has your countenance fallen? Or why do you got a bad attitude? You, know, you said you get there down there, right? So Cain, why has your countenance fallen? And then God says, Cain, if you do well, it'll go right with you. And then it says, but sin lies crouching at your door, but you can overcome it. So, don't, when sin begins to crouch at your door, when you begin to hear the, the, uh, the footsteps of the enemy in your life, don't let him just come on you like you're just a, 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 a quilt. <laughs> you go fight. And you have to fight and fight and fight. I don't know any man who will let anyone come into his house and attack his family. Just go, go come on in, they're right here. No, you're going to fight. But in the spiritual realm, we kind of lose that mindset. Well, God will make a way. Yeah, he'll make a way through your hands. He'll make a way through your confession. He'll make a way through your word. He'll make a way through your faith. Amen? Right. Amen? Because you know what? There are things that God will do for us, but there's nothing that God will do for us that we can do for ourselves. That was good, Pastor Jerry. I'll say it again. There are things that God will do for you, but there's nothing that God will do for you that you can do for yourself. He gave you a very, very awesome brain. He gave you a mind. He gave you a body to do what he's called to do. And so, church, stop putting all the onus on God. Now, when it's God's turn, he'll take care of his business, amen? amen. But when it's your turn, you got you to uh, Christian up. <laughs> Christian up. See, I didn't say man up. A woman, but I said Christian up. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6, 11 says this. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the walls of the devil. Watch this, that, for we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Watch this, therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all to stand, you stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with the truth. So watch this, church, I'll paraphrase. You have the belt of truth around your loins. The truth of God's word. You have the helmet of salvation. You have the sword of the word. You have the breastplate of rights, and you have the shoes of the preparation of the gospel. If you got all that, you don't need nothing else. You don't need Oprah. You don't need Dr. Oz. You don't need anybody. Hallelujah. And now that's the say of what I'm just saying, you know what? We can or we cannot keep getting our spirit, our information to fight a spiritual battle from a carnal world. Come on. See, Facebook should not give you ideas to how to be a better wife or better husband. <laughs> Come on. 
<laughs> I love you too. <laughs> you know? Think about it. You don't go ask somebody who has, who, who's been married 15 times for some marriage advice. <laughs> nope. Here. Go find somebody who's been married 20, 30, 40 years. Who, how you do it? I can't stand it. Well, maybe you know what? They ain't gonna change. <laughs> and, and what do you do? I just sat there. <laughs> I mean, you know what? You married the person. I'm and, yeah, and you know what? If they change and you got married, work with it. <laughs> work with it. I, I, I'm not reading anyone's mail. I'm not talking about <laughs> one situation. What I am saying is this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking to no one here. I'm not. But I'm talking to the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. But when you walk up that aisle and you say, I do, you have did. <laughs> uh, unless they are in mortal, mortal sin and they, and they won't return from it, you suck like Chuck. I mean, you are. <laughs> and, and, and you suck with them through thick and thin, good and bad. And I mean, you know, they made divorce easier than being married. And again, I'm not talking about here, so don't, 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 don't be defended. But what I'm saying is this, God honors covenant. That's right. He honors covenant. And marriage is hard. My wife has to pray every day for me. <laughs> because I'm not always easy to live with. Come on. Come on. Y'all know that I'm not perfect, right? Ask her. Ask her. Ask that boy back there. I'm not perfect. I, I mess up. I have to say I'm sorry a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> say me. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> think about it. And, and and you know what, husbands, if you can't say you're sorry or I apologize, there's something wrong with your honor system. Because if you can say it to a counselor, you can say it to your wife. If you can say it to your homie, she can say it to your wife. If you can say it to a bottle of beer, you can say it to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Man, I love this. Hallelujah, praise God. Where are we, y'all? We're, we're done. Let's go to Luke 10, 17. Here we go, Luke 10, 17. It says, Then the 70 returned with joy. This happens to be when Jesus and his disciples were, they, they just got back from a healing party. They were healing people and set them free. And this is what happened. They got all excited and they got the big head. It says, Did the seven day return with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Now, here's, a, here's what I want you to understand about Satan's position compared to ours. It says in verse 18, And he said to them, I saw Satan, this is Jesus talking, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. When you look at the word heaven in the Greek, in that context, it means power. So now watch this. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from power. He fell from power. He fell from all authority over you and I. And I'll prove it to you. In verse 19, he says this. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Wow. Now, I don't want to freak out at all, but watch this. I'm going to give you two examples of this. When you are too young to handle stuff yourself, you have someone bigger than you are to handle it. All right? I like to watch all these animal shows. And when a lion or a cheetah is teaching their young how to hunt, they will go and chase down the gazelle or the, or the deer or whatever, and they will wound it for their babies to go and, and chase it. And then they'll learn and learn how to chase stuff down and kill it. The mother has defeated the big foe to teach him how to work and run. Now, when Jayla was two or three and someone hurt her, like uh, the carpet, <laughs> <laughs> I say, did that carpet hurt you, baby? Yeah. Well, you want that beat up? Yeah. You mean old carpet? You leave my baby alone. My baby 
baby girl. I do it down too. <laughs> Carpet boy, same thing, same thing. <laughs> Come on. Right, Jim? Right, Jim? Come on now. Hallelujah. So now watch this. The Young Man Bible says this. It says, Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability. I'm going to say it again. Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability. So why do we say I'm losing my mind? Why do we say they're driving me crazy? You'll have what you say. He's given you the mental capacity, the mental intellect, because we have a mind of what? Christ. Christ, to do all things and to handle all things. You can multitask, you can do eight, nine things on top of because you have the mind of Christ. If you use what he gave you, you won't have what you have sometimes. Ooh, that's good. Y'all get that? If you use what God gave you, you won't have the stuff that you have sometimes. If you use the mental capacity that you have, then you have what God wants you to have. See, we're trying to train our kids now so that they'll have more than what we've ever had. Well, now we've got to rearrange their mindset. We've got to take them from wanting to be like the world, Jesus, to wanting to be like Christ Jesus. We've got to take them from wanting to be like their friends and wanting to be like what they see on, on, on what do they see. To the, no, 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 no. You can't have two masters. You either love one or hate the other. I'll say, Jalen, do, do you hear daddy listen to secular music? Well, no. Do you hear daddy cussing out, just as cussing? No. Well, we don't do that here. And you're my seed, and you're Tony's seed, and so you'll do, do what we do because of you, you're going to die. No. <laughs> it's because the time is coming now that there must be a demarcation of what is godly and what is not godly. Amen. Amen? Because the world don't know what's male and female right now. They have no clue. I wish some dude would walk in the rest with my wife there. PJ will have a jail ministry. <laughs> Tell you come pray me out, but hey, we'll have a jail ministry right there. <laughs> well, I think I'm a woman. No, from the looks of you, dude, you a, you a man. You grown, too. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going off today, right here. I got some all built up inside of me, Lord Jesus. And we don't vote for people who do believe in that kind of stuff. Hallelujah. Mark, Matthew 18, 18 says this, church. Matthew 18, 18. It says Jesus talking. It says, the surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything, ever say anything? Amen. Say anything again. Amen. Watch this. That they ask, it'll be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So the word bind means this. It means to take spiritual authority over. It means to bind or fasten and change. Or it means to stop the progress of something. So when you begin to pray for whatever God says pray for, and you say, Satan, I bind you in this situation, you have literally stopped the progress of what Satan is doing in your life. You have said, Satan, not here. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As, as, as for me and my work, we're going to serve God. As for me and my family, we're going to serve it. Why? Because God says so. Now, number three says this. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Rachel, here's, um, I, I, I skipped one. I'm sorry. Matthew 18 to 18, 18, and in the next, uh, in the Empire Bible says this. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind, I'm sorry, whatever you forbid and declare to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already for, forbidden in heaven. I'm going to send this to all, um, all the uh, candidates right now. And whatever you permit and declare proper and lawful on earth must be what is already permitted in heaven. Again, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree, harmonize together, make a symphony together, about whatever, anything and everything they, they may ask, it will come to pass and be done for them by my Father in heaven. For whenever two, or sorry, wherever two or three are gathered, drawn together as my followers, in, into my name, there I am in the midst of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three. This will up your prayer life. It will up your prayer life. 
So when you are going through the fight, when you're fighting and fighting and fighting, it's meant to up your prayer life. And a term that my wife and I heard back in 08, and we still use it today, um, when you allow a trial, you will take it to a whole nother level. Okay, say it with me. A whole nother level. Because you know why? When you begin to pray and pray and pray, you know, it's amazing that when you're having a great day, when all your bills are paid, you don't have to pray a whole lot. But when your wife is sick, or your husband lost a job, or you go to, or, or, or you get a disconnect notice, you begin to pray more. It's amazing, isn't it? And so when stuff goes bad in your life, when you have an issue, or you know, you hear the word cancer, or, 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 or lupus, or whatever, you begin to pray more. <laughs> you begin to pray more. You get a better report from your teacher or from your kid's teacher. You begin to pray more. And when that issue happens, you'll take your prayer level to a whole nother level. It will, church. Watch the proof to you. Philippians 4, 6 says this. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It will say everything. By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And watch this, you This is so good. And the peace of God. The peace of God, the peace of God, which surpasses or goes beyond all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That's awesome, y'all. That is awesome. Now watch this. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Why? Watch it down. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. I mean, do this. And watch this. And you do these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Wow. One plus one equals two. That is not new math. Think about it. That's called algorithm. Is that right? Algorithm? Algorithm. Why? If you do this, you'll get this. If you pray, you'll get this. If you don't pray, you won't get this. Bottom line, church. And we complain when things don't happen the way we think it should happen. Are you praying? See, if there is a lack in your life, there's also a deficit of prayer in your life. Say. You have not because you what? Ask not. That's Bible. So if you ain't got it, you ain't praying for it. Or you may be praying for it, but God said not right now. And hopefully he's not saying no. Because if you have the mind of Christ, whatever you'll ask God, it'll be either yes or amen. Or yes and yes can sometimes mean you'll get it, but not right now. Because you ain't ready for it yet. You don't have to tour it the handle yet. I mean, one day I'm going to buy my daughter an AR-15, but not right now. One day I'm going to buy my son a car, big Ford truck, but not right now, hush. <laughs> he's, a, he, he's a shitty man, I pray for him. Pray for him. <laughs> Hallelujah. James 5.16 says this. This is so awesome, y'all. It says, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. The Amplified Bible says this, the earnest, heartfelt, continue, that's important, continue, continue, continue. My, see, we've learned in our marriage to not tell our kids they're gonna get something until like an hour before they get it. Because they will wear you out. <laughs> Well, you said, I know what I said, boy. Sit <laughs> Continue prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Dynamic in its working. Wow, watch this. The Mission Bible says this. The prayer of a person living right. And what's that? That's me. Watch this. With God is something powerful to be reckoned with. That is incredible. The phrase to be reckoned with means this. It is a thing or person 
of considerable importance or ability that is not to be ignored or underestimated. Woo! Yes. When Satan sees that, he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. That's one of God's kids. Hey, mess with them. No, Lord Jesus. Well, I said, there's a verse that says, oh, thank you. Um, thank you, Jesus. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord raises a, a standard. In the Hebrew, that word standard means banner. Banner in the Hebrew means you raise a flag and your enemies know who's your daddy. In other words, or the enemy will know who your king is. And so in today's vernacular, when the enemy comes in like a flood, we raise up our hands and say we'll know who the banner is. That's why we raise our hands when we worship. That's why your hands should be right here when you worship it. Or at all. They should be up there. That's your banner. That right there is your banner. Your hands high, worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because now Satan knows who you're serving. Hallelujah. He says it is something to be reckoned with. It, it, it means that you can't ignore this Christian person. You can't, you cannot underestimate the power of this Christian person. Why? You, you know, it's kind of like the Cowboys. You just cannot underestimate them. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. We had more Cowboy Grand on Saturday night. Oh, that's got two friends done. I love you. Oh, I'm sorry, Noah. I'm sorry, Cowboy. Yeah, Cowboy. There you go. There you go. Okay. Go back here. Go back here. You know, the draft is Friday, right? The draft is Friday, baby. It's a Friday. I know. Woo! Okay, I'm back now. I'm back. <sighs> Valerie, spell <Valerie. laughs> Number four, and probably one of the most important things that you got to do, is that you have to discern if it's a test or a temptation. All right? So when you go into the battle, you have to discern if it's a test or a temptation. Why is that? Test come from who? God, temptations from the devil. Temptations are there to help you sin. <laughs> a test is there to lead you to promotion. All right? Temptations are from the enemy. Tests are normally, 89% are from God. Why? Because when you take a test, your teacher hopefully wants you to pass. If they're, you know, CCSD teachers. I want you to pass. Randy's out of here right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right? But if you're being tempted, this is, this is, you know, this is how old I am. Okay? This, I remember back when I was in the fifth grade. Oh. To be in this club, you had to say the S word. <laughs> <laughs> now that's on every channel in the world. <laughs> they say it on the news. It's everywhere. And so they were trying to tempt me to sin. I did. I said, shut up. <laughs> Ain't no cuss. Church. Temptation. Yeah, I'm scared of my mama. You're right. Because my, my mom would have heard it. She would have been important. I went. Shut up. I knew my mother. You know she would. She has a long arm. Boy, she'll come out there. You know how mama's. You know, be back in the day when y'all would drive along this is going to be on your vacation. Your mom could be in the front seat and y'all have a station wagon, a rambler. Y'all remember rambler? Rambler? She could be in the front seat driving, driving, and you see the she can reach back and, and then this part of her hand will hit you. I mean, but she's going this tall. You know, that's amazing. <laughs> Mama got long arms, boy, long arms. <laughs> First Corinthians 10 13 says this. No temptation has, has overtaken you except such is common to man. But God, everyone say God, God, is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But with temptation <coughs> will also make the way of escape. And we stop right there sometimes. He, 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 he'll let me go. How did I do it? Watch this. That you may be able to bear it. <laughs> you don't, he'll help you out, but you're going to still carry the load. That's right. <laughs> but God, I know, yes. Hope you have a strong back. That's right. A strong spirit, a strong will. Look at this. The, the, the Empire Bible says this. For no temptation, no trial regarded as 
enticing to sin, know that you that is not common to man. That is, no temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance. In other words, what you're going through, you be alright. Just get over it. Just get, I mean, y'all, understand, y'all, Lord, I'm going to walk through it. Lord, I'm going to walk through it. Lord, I'm going to walk through it. It's not a common man. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing at all. Then what I said, it says, and that is not adjusted. No, this is so good. That is no temptation or trial has come to you that is, that is beyond human uh, a resistance. And that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to human experience. It's a part of life, y'all. And such a man can bear it. Now watch this. But God is faithful to his word and to his compassion nature. And he can be trusted. Not to let you be tempted and tried or and a saved beyond your abilities. And strength of resistance and power to endure. But the temptation, he will always, don't say always, always. say it again, always. always. Watch this. Always provide the way out. Watch this. The means of escape to a landing place that you may be capable and strong and powerful to bear up under patience. We show our immaturity when we say, hurry up, God. <laughs> God, I can't take it. Hey, you can. you be right. you be just fine. I think about our great men and women who, you know, who go through boot camp. They, they, they were okay. They, they, they thought they would just, just die, right? <laughs> right, Jason? I mean, it was horrible. Horrible. I, well, I know what I see on TV. It's horrible. <laughs> But they, they, they went through it. They went through it. When people who have been married six months come to me and say, it's hard, you be all right. You be fine. Go talk to Joe, Adam, or Noah. 20, 60 years between these people here. You know, go talk to Pam, Pam Miller, Pat Miller. 40, what, 41 years. Six months? I don't like him anymore. You should figure that out through a marriage counseling. You got a chance. <laughs> well, you don't brush your teeth. Well, you know what? Give him a toothbrush. <laughs> My son, <laughs> he has the electrical. Just put it in his mouth when he's sleeping. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, Pastor, she want to cook for me. Well, go have a talk to Natalie. Go have a talk to my wife. She'll let you. The donkey's about to cook. Just learn, learn, learn. <laughs> Mrs. Stouffer's is awesome. Baby <laughs> 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 Crocker would knock her off for a while, boy, I tell you. <laughs> so here's your landing place right here, Psalms 9111. If you're ever depressed, if you're ever scared, if you're ever freaking out, read this chapter. Psalms 91 is incredible. It says, he who dwells, I'm going to say that's me. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide whoo, under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of terror by night, so no more nightmares, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of pestilence that walks in darkness, I'm gonna get happy here, nor of destruction, don't freak out with the Lord command, that lays waste at noonday. Watch this, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right side, but it shall not come near my house when it is ever at the Why? Because I believe what I read and I apply it in my life. Now watch this. We had some stuff happen this week that we didn't expect financially, but what happened last night, or what did happen last night, is worth it all. Amen. <laughs> I got my boo, I got my old dog, I got my daughter healthy, she can still walk and cook and be walk and breathe, so praise my life time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Watch this. The testing of your faith is there to produce patience. But the temptation 
of the flesh is there to prevent promotion. I say that again. The testing of your faith is there to produce patience. But the temptation of the flesh is there to prevent promotion. And so as you learn and continually walk in the fact that we must count all joy, no matter what happens, folks, when you leave this room today, no matter what happens in the parking lot, no matter what happens as you get on Lake Mead Parkway or 215 or 95 going home, you count it all joy. You count it all joy. Why? Because God has not walked off the throne. He's still there. I don't care what the news says. I don't care what what Hillary says or Bernie or, or, or Donald or, or uh, a Cruz said. I don't care. Why? Because I'm putting my faith not in those people, but in God. My faith is in God alone. In God alone. 